Uh, hello and welcome to this discussion on the sidelines of uh, the huddle in Bangalore. Uh, my name is Raghavan Srinivasan, I'm the editor of the Hindu Business Line. I have with me Mr. Keshav Murgesh. He is the CEO of WNS Global Services, which is one of the world's largest business process management companies. It's a global company uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, but actually run out of India, headquartered in Bombay. And uh, Keshav and I were part of a discussion a little while ago um, where we looked at the question of whether we need reforms 2.0 in the sense that the first wave of reforms which started in 1991 and uh, 92 and has been going on ever since at a very gradual pace with fits and starts of activity, uh, has that more or less run its course? Uh, does the economy, do we as a nation face a different set of challenges today which need a different set of policy solutions. So that was really the topic of discussion and to sort of expand on some of the strands that we picked up uh, from there. Uh, Keshav, uh, I would like to start by asking you, um, do we need actually a new reforms agenda? Okay, so first of all, uh uh, Mr. Srinivasan, it's actually wonderful to be at the Hindu huddle and to be interacting with you and many others at this session. Uh, you know, the reforms that were launched in 1991, I think they were you know, transformational from a point of view of branding and positioning India in the global markets, I would say. So some of the things that happened at that point in time were unheard of from a closed country like India. And I think the best thing it did was it presented brand India in a completely different format to international audiences. I think since then, you know, successive governments have kept tweaking with uh, policy and have kept announcing really interesting new kind of changes, including some of the things we saw in the last few years, which was around GST, around startup uh, funding, around uh, the angel areas, around you know many other things, including uh, digital uh, and the opening of, of, of e-commerce. And personally, from my perspective, I actually think that all of these have huge potential. Uh, at this point in time, I would strongly recommend that there should be very strong focus on executing and delivering against the promise of each of these policies, because if that happens, the potential for many things, you know, creating surpluses, uh, delivering better exports, uh, creating you know more wealth, more jobs is actually significant. At this point in time, many of us are quite consumed with some of the minor niggles that go with introducing a transformational policy. And uh, all I would say is execution is the most important thing to focus on. Having said that, in some areas, you know, it's always good to keep tweaking with policy to introduce you know kind of new thinking, particularly around. Uh, labor reforms around uh, uh, infrastructure and, and and many other things that will drive the next level of growth. So if you take a look at the sort of stated and unstated uh, goals of reforms which were undertaken, I mean the immediate one of course uh, as somebody pointed out was uh, to sort of address India's uh, looming balance of payment crisis at that point of time where we were not in a position to meet our overseas debt obligations and that was the starting point of reforms and from there we have come a long way, we are now one of the world's most powerful economies, uh, we have a fairly comfortable foreign exchange surplus and so on. So in that sense that limited agenda uh, uh, goal has been achieved. The other goal was basically to sort of uh, unleash uh, the manufacturing sector in this country uh, to take uh, the share of uh, manufacturing in GDP to around 30-35%. Um, now, what we find today, 26-27 years down the road, is that, you know, maybe on that front, you know, it's a mixed uh, bag because we have created a number of very large uh, manufacturing entities we are now significant scale players in number of industries. Automobiles springs to mind, you know, uh, two wheelers in particular, uh, even four wheeler. Now we are a significant size uh, scale player. Uh, we have sort of taken the lead in a number of precision manufacturing areas and so on. But overall share of 
manufacturing in GDP is actually been reducing. Uh, the second, and that was an unstated goal, was to also help a large part of our population which was living, you know, sort of earning, uh, uh, eking out a subsistence living of agriculture. You know, one of the problems with Indian agriculture, when you look at productivity, the, the problem of per capita productivity, overall productivity was big. We're a food surplus country, we're the world's, uh, I think, largest agricultural producer now. Um, but per capita productivity is very low. Too many people depend on too little. And reforms are also meant to, you know, create this, you know, uh, set of jobs, higher quality jobs uh, in the manufacturing sector, which is supposed to have absorbed this population. But that, too, hasn't really happened. Uh, so, if we were, if we had the opportunity to set the policy agenda today, what would your priorities be? What do you think we, as a economy as a country need to do because I think for businesses a lot of the problems have been sorted out, they have found solutions for themselves. You know, so IT sector is a very good example where it solved its own problem of finding talent for uh, to meet its uh, growth aspirations. It, it found people, it trained them, it created this thing and you are continuously in investing and reinvesting in skilling and upgradation. So, you know, because that's a business imperative, you need to stay competitive globally, so you do that. And you sort of sorted your problem, even though the education system hasn't been able to solve that problem. But overall, what do you think need, uh, should be our policy priority? So, you know, Victor Hugo once said that for the bold, the future really is opportunity. Mm -hmm. And personally, from my perspective, I actually think that the government can create policies, can come up with a set of rules, need to have some soft touch kind of you know regulations not you know too hard if you ask me and should try to stay away from trying to run companies or getting too involved in in, in businesses but beyond that i think the challenge is really how industry and the industrial industry players are really taking advantage of all of this in order to create uh, you know some of these uh, things that you you spoke about now you spoke about manufacturing the reality is I don't think the government actually can come in and, and manufacture. It is for all of us as you know, people running companies to actually be smart enough to you know, transform our businesses, leveraging some of these rules and then create some of the other you know, uh, benefits that are required. The biggest thing I think we should all be talking about is how are we as a result of the big change that is happening. And I'm talking more about the technological di disruption that is taking place in the world outside. Look, it's the disruption is not taking place inside our companies. It's actually taking place in business models outside. It is taking place, you know, in the general business environment. And therefore, a lot of companies are finding it difficult at this point in time to even understand what are those changes and how they should recoup or change their business models to be relevant in a longer term, you know, uh, kind of uh, market. So I would say that the best thing that can happen is if we can, you know, say that, uh, you know, Creating jobs is a priority and overall skilling of people becomes a second big priority. Something that you know China did you know extremely well and then added to that meritocracy, you know, around education and meritocracy to drive the GDP growth from three hundred and sixty six dollars to almost you know eight thousand dollars. So from, from from my perspective I would say that the key really is how do we get you know people running the manufacturing sector to quickly go past the disruption mode and start scaling up and looking at you know, new ways of delivering the business and therefore creating new jobs. I think on the services side, there is still huge opportunity in our business. Uh, I still think on the BPM side, you know, the demand trends show nascency and underpenetration. If you look at our growth rates as well as employment generation rates, they're you know, significantly high. So for, from an India perspective, there is still huge potential you know, for some of this to happen. And from an agricultural point of view, yes, there is potential for reforms essentially to make sure that there is more ability for mechanized kind of agriculture to take place to really celebrate you know farmers who are creating you know big surpluses paying them well uh, and i think so the whole focus now has to be on you know uh, giving those soft touch i would say policy measures around uh, infrastructure around you know some amount on labor you know reskilling as well as on parts of manufacture that need it I'd like to, you know, 
ask you something more specifically relating to IT and to NASCOM, with which you're closely associated. Uh, NASCOM, a few years ago, adopted the slogan, a billion unserved. Essentially, the idea was that having largely focused on the external world of driving export of IT and ITES from India to global markets, NASCOM said maybe it's time we looked at our domestic market, looked at the population here, and see how best we can leverage the kind of technology and skills and people that we have to serve this. And a key part of that, that billion unserved, is really delivering better quality of governance. Uh, so, and where you know technology uh, can be a great enabler, e-governance and so on. But how far? What do you, what do you think needs to be done on that front? You know. So actually, you know, uh, as you may have realized in the past through our interactions, I am a big bull on opportunity of the future, yes. and you have actually identified probably one of the biggest opportunities for India and the technology world. Right, because right now all of us have been focused on the, you know, on the external. The reality is the big potential on delivering services in India, on the hardware industry and cyber security. All of this together could actually potentially be another 100 to 150 billion dollar industry over a period of time. And do not, for even a minute, assume that NASCOM and NASCOM companies are, you know, ignoring this. We are actually very much focused on working with the government to ensure that the right policies, procedures are being you know, unleashed. And if you look at it, you know, uh, the BPM policy was created recently by the, by the government and announced. You may re recognize that very recently, the uh, procurement policy yes. was also created. E-procurement. Yeah, e -procurement. So some of these policies uh, that were released actually have a hand, uh, have been partnered in, with you know, agencies like NASCOM that have done it, and therefore, as some of these you know, issues that have also arisen as a result of these policies, as they get ironed out, you will see that this potential for revenue generation, profit generation, as well as job creation will get realized. Now, will that happen overnight tomorrow? No. But will it happen over a period of time? Absolutely. Right? And therefore, I, I, I believe that there's a lot of potential. I think the government understands it, uh, and the industry definitely recognizes it. I think one of the key sort of uh, uh, aspects of our whole experiment with reform has been that one, it has been very gradual, or I think uh, somebody used the term reforms by stealth, you know, almost, you know, through sleight of hand we, we sort of uh, accomplished something. The second has been that it has been uh, really, I think, more, almost entirely focused on uh, the role of government. You know, the government is so central to all this that, you know, all its worldview shape with it at, at the center of everything. Uh, I think the world has changed. I think, uh, you know, uh, now we're given the volatility and the uncertainty and the speed of change which is happening. You can't really wait for policy to catch up, and you either find a solution to a problem or you perish. So, in that sense, do you think that it's now really up to the players in the economy, businesses, you know, enterprises, to push this forward? That each one really finds its own solution to the challenges that they face, or do you think that you still need a supporting ecosystem to sort of unleash this full potential? Great question. So, you know, Charles Dan Darwin had said it's not the strongest or the most intelligent, but really the player that is most capable of making the change that is going to survive. And frankly, you know, as you look at the Indian economy and look at some of the industries, you will see that some of the smarter, you know, kind of players who have been able to evolve quickly and kept transforming with the times have done well. The IT industry, great case in point. But if you look at some of the other areas that you define uh, and also define at our uh, other uh, discussion earlier, you know things like agriculture, you know the weavers. There are actually huge business opportunities in every one of them, right? The the challenge, therefore, is who is actually going to grab some of these as business opportunities 
and then go out there and say, I'm going to channelize the output of these 500 weavers or 1,000 weavers or 5,000 weavers and create a business and then go to the government and say, here is the gentle help I need from you and I will help you spur employment generation as well as create surpluses and take jobs into tier 3, tier 4 location. So I actually think yeah, the time has come and you will see that with the startup ecosystem, people have started doing it, right? And it's only a matter of time before, you know, the government and uh, the, 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 the industry players will actually walk, you know, hand in hand together in terms of, you know, generating huge surpluses for the country. Wonderful. And I think on that positive note, we'll wind up.